Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of FTB Beyond. We're back in the village, which we are going to be transforming fairly soon. We're going to start our transformation pretty soon. I think the first thing we're going to have to do is terraform, because man, the terrain around here is just infuriatingly bad. <laughs> but before we can get started with that, we need to get a few things going. Uh, in today's episode, I want to set up a Tinker Smeltery. I want to set up some very basic machinery, and I'd like to get a little bit of the village terraformed first. Uh, I think before we tackle those things, though... Oh, and by the way, there was a live stream between last episode and this episode. If you want to go watch the archived live stream, you can find it at twitch.tv slash wellsnight. It'll be there. Uh, but otherwise... We went caving and resource gathering, and I got everything I needed to make grout. So I've got a lot of these seared bricks smelting up right now. I also have four stacks already made, so we will be able to make our Tinker Smeltery today for sure. But before I start all the other stuff, I would really like to get some kind of... I guess you'd say quality of life things made. Uh, I did go ahead and make a sleeping bag, which is pretty easy. It's just three wool and two carpet. And what that basically does is it allows you to sleep anywhere without resetting your spawn. So it's quite useful. Uh, I also want to make... Uh, I guess I'm going to need some, some logs here. Let's just grab some birch. We're going to need a crafting bench. We're going to need one of those. And we're going to need a sign. And if we combine those two things, that makes a crafting table on a stick. Which is essentially a crafting table you can access without having to put anything down. It's like a mobile crafting table. So, kind of a useful little thing for when you're out and about. Oh, torches, come back. I need you. There we go. Uh, I also want to make... Um, actually, you know what I'm going to need to do? I need to smelt up a little bit of gold. Uh, probably easier, honestly, to just make one more furnace, since I don't want to interrupt the grout that's cooking up. Let's just put it right here. This will be like our little temporary furnace. And I just need, like, one gold ingot. That's all I really need. I don't want to do too much, because I want to save my resources until we can have ore doubling, which will come when we have the Tinker Smeltery, so it's not far away. But there we go, let's make a gold ingot, turn that into nuggets, and then if we grab some string, we can combine those to make two golden lassos. They also each take eight experience points. But we can use these to essentially protect the villagers. Let's be, let's be honest, villagers, not the brightest bunch around. I mean, they're, they're kind of... They're kind of derpy. Like, look at this guy. He's just examining the dirt in the wall of the farm that's raised up way off the ground. Like, I mean, look at the the, the villagers. They did such a poor job designing this village that uh, I, I fear for their safety. I fear for their safety. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one house in the village, and I'm thinking... I'm thinking we're going to use this one over here in the far corner. This guy right here. And this is going to be essentially our safety, our safety house, right? This is where we're going to put the villagers and we're going to lock them up in here so that they're safe. That's the plan. So let's get rid of some of these ladders. And I think what I'm going to do is we'll just put that in place there, and then I think I'm actually going to put the ladders maybe even, like, here? And then we can basically drop them down. Let's just test this out and see if it works. I want to save uh, as many of the villagers as I can. I don't want them to die. And the thing is, while I'm running around and trying to redesign my village, you know, what I'm trying to renovate it and make it look all nice and stuff, they're just going to get in the way. They're just going to be all over the place and getting in my way and being loud and obnoxious. So for now, I'm I'm going to I'm going to send them to like a like an internment camp. <laughs> We're just going to lock them up in this house uh, where they won't be able to get out, but they'll also be safe there from mobs and 
and things of that nature. Uh, and then I think what I'm going to do is once I have all the villagers imprisoned, I might do a little bit more resource gathering. I certainly need to get all of my uh, grout smelted up, and I need to figure out where I'm going to put the tinker's smeltery. What I'd like to do is I'd like to basically incorporate all the different things that we're going to build this series into the village in some way. So, for example, the tinker's smeltery, maybe what we would do is we would make like a blacksmith in the village and we would incorporate the smeltery into that blacksmith which would make sense not only from like a a lore slash story perspective but i think it would also be really cool it gives us kind of a unique way to uh to deal with some of these things and and kind of gives us an interesting building challenge as well so let me finish rounding up all the villagers and imprisoning them for their own safety. You know, it, it, it's for their safety. I'm not cruel. They're, it's not a concentration house. It's it, it, it's for their safety. Some, sometimes you need to lock people away for their safety. I mean, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. Like, look at this guy. He's just opening doors and shutting. You know what this really is? This is like the, this is like the insane asylum. That's basically what's going on. These people are being institutionalized. Uh, for their own safety, because they're they're that idiotic. I mean, <laughs> okay, I think the joke was dead like five minutes ago, and now I'm just going over the top. But anyway, let me finish getting all the villagers uh, taken care of. Let me get everything done as far as um, getting all my preparations ready, and then I'll come back to you. All right, guys, I am back. So I've got all the grout cooked up into seared brick. By the way, I should probably mention, just in case you didn't know, grout is just sand, gravel, and clay. Uh, not too hard to get. Uh, I've decided what I'm gonna do. Oh, by the way, it's so much, so much more peaceful and quiet over here. There's no annoying villager sounds. Ah, oh, it's, it's beautiful. It's so nice. Um, <laughs> I've decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a temporary smeltery just so I can get myself some decent tools with which to terraform the village. Uh, and then, once that's done, then I will choose a house or whatever to use as a blacksmith, and we'll move the smeltery in to that building. That's my plan. Uh, however, one thing that's needed for any smeltery is a tank, uh, which has lava in it, we need a smeltery tank, and I think what I'm going to do, just so I don't have to keep running back and forth, is I'm going to make an Ender I.O. fluid tank. Like this, this will hold 16 buckets of lava. Then we'll make all of our different components. Um, I will say, I'm not going to go super, super in detail as to how Tinker's Construct works and all that kind of stuff. I've done it in a lot of my other series. And I think taking the whole episode to go over it in every little detail is a bit much, so I'm not going to. But if you do want to know more about Tinker's Construct, you're welcome to check out some of my other series. Uh, I've done this in plenty of them. Uh, so there we go. That's basically what we need for our Tinker's Smeltery to actually function. And then, of course, we need a whole bunch of seared bricks so that we can make the smeltery itself. Now, I think I would like, in fact, let's make uh, four more drains, four more faucets, and then let's make one more tank. So we'll have, well, actually, you know what? If I'm running off a different tank, this will be enough. Uh, let's do that, and then let's see. We've currently got six, so we'll do two of those and two of those. That should be a pretty good start. Uh, and then the rest of these we can make into regular old seared brick. I am going to hold on to some seared bricks just in case I forgot something. I am not exactly infallible, so it's quite possible that I'll get partway into constructing the smeltery and go, Oh, idiot, why did you not make whatever, and then 
uh, it will be nice to have that extra stuff lying around. Now, I see some lava over here, but it looks like it might just be lava that's draining. Hmm, yeah, I think that's just lava draining out of the mountain, which is not exactly ideal, honestly, because A, that's only going to give me one lava bucket, and in addition to that, it's going to be a massive pain to get to. Uh, I think I can pull it off, though, and I do want to seal the hole, <laughs> uh, just because the way the world looks is something that's moderately important to me. So let's just get rid of this lava flow, and I'm not even going to worry about picking it up. I saw another lava thing on the map earlier. Oh, there's another lava flow up there? Really? Man. <laughs> uh, let me get some lava together. Let me get my Tinker's tools all in place. I'll show you what I've got when I'm done with them, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so the tools are done. I basically went bronze pretty much across the board, with the exception of my sword, which has a silver blade. So the pick, the hatchet, and the shovel are bronze tool head, and then wooden everything else. Uh, the silver broadsword is a silver sword blade, copper uh, crossbar, and a wooden thing. That'll give it a little bit of an experience boost. I went with silver because it has the greatest attack power of the materials that I currently have access to. And then these three, the hammer, the excavator, and the lumber axe are bronze everything, unless they have a binding in them, in which case I went copper for that. Uh, these tools are going to be upgraded down the road. They're not the greatest tools right now, but they'll get the job done temporarily and allow me to do a bit of terraforming and stuff, which will be great. So, uh, the next thing that I want to do before we jump into terraforming is I want to get some basic power gen stuff going. Uh, and this is going to be something else we're going to set up just kind of temporarily in here. And I have kind of a pretty cool plan for this. So, we need to make ourselves a furnace generator. And first we need to make machine blocks. So let's grab some of this. We make ourselves a chest. And then redstone and iron. Okay, so we'll grab some redstone and some iron. We put that in here. We do one of those, and bam, we have four machine blocks. Then to turn that into a furnace generator, we need more iron, we need more redstone, and we need a furnace. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to use this furnace right here that I don't really need. And I believe it's like that. There we go. Now, that thing... <laughs> This is where we get to start having some fun. So, this is a setup that I have used before in the past. It's one of my favorite setups ever. We're going to make a culinary generator. <laughs> and we are going to run our early game power on toast. I've done this before in older 1.7 series. Uh, and I may have even done it in, like, one more modded series more recently than that. But I haven't really been able to do it effectively since Thermal Expansion and the Trivection Chamber, specifically, which is an upgrade in Thermal Expansion, didn't exist. So now, what we need... We're gonna need a few more things. We're gonna need one, two... Three more chests. Like so. Uh, oh, I'm gonna need some sort of power conduit. Um, and we don't have thermal dynamics, which is what I would actually prefer to use. Cables, maybe? We could go with the, the basic cables from immersive engineering. That might work. Uh, LV wire is four copper wires. That would be enough. And then LV connectors. I would need a little bit of hardened clay, but that wouldn't be that bad. I've got... Oh, I don't have enough, though. Ah, uh, okay. What about... Basic conduits from Ender.io? Oh, except I need... iron redstone and iron that well hmm 
I don't know. I mean, I could technically make conductive iron that way, but that's also not exactly ideal. I think my best bet is probably going to be, let's go make some hard, let, let me go get some more clay. We might be able to find some even like right over here or something. If not, I'm, I bet there's a bunch over there in the ocean. Uh, yeah, 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 here we go. Let's get this clay right here. There we go. And we'll go with the immersive engineering wiring, just for starters, because it'll work. Uh, it's, it's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world, but it will work, and that's the important thing. So, let's swing in here. And what we need to do is go four of those. We'll grab a little bit of tiny coal. And actually, you know what? I've got four furnaces. Let's use them all just to speed this up a little bit. It won't take long at all doing it that way. There we go. Okay, so that's all good. Oh, wait, that doesn't go in there. That goes over here. There we go. Now, if we look at those LV connectors again, I'll need copper ingots. Okay, that's easy. So let's grab our hardened clay out of here. And we'll go like so. There we go. And then I need you. And we need to make some wires. So what we can do is make... Uh, actually, hold on. Before I do that, how do I make this? I can use a shears. Okay, awesome. And I do have a shears, right? here. So we'll go one, two, three, four. Like so. Turn those into these copper wires. And then wrap them around a treated stick. And that gives me the wire coils. So that should do the trick. Let's tear out this area down here. Uh, I'm going to tear you out as well gonna put a wire right there now I don't know if I will be able to pull that through all the way but we'll figure it out as we go so we've got our culinary generator over here now I need to make a machine frame uh, maybe it's called something else oh no it's right here here we go machine frame so glass tin gear uh, gonna need to make some tin gears. That's okay. Let me get everything together for this, guys. I'll be right back with you. All right, guys. I am back, and I think I have almost everything I need to make the redstone furnace. There we go. So there's the basic redstone furnace. Now, thermal expansion has changed a little bit, okay? So this used to, used to be able to, like, switch back and forth between stuff and it doesn't exactly work that way anymore uh but let's hook you and you up like so okay so this thing should now be getting power or, or well it will be once this thing is getting power um but that's only part of our setup we need to upgrade that so let's go uh, hardened, yeah, here we go, hardened upgrade kit. So for that, I'm going to need a bronze gear, and then I'll need some invar ingots. And invar I can get with one nickel and two iron. Okay, so let me get everything together for that. I also need to make a sag mill, and a sag mill is pretty easy. I need a piston. I need some iron, some flint, and then a machine chassis, which is just iron and then a basic capacitor. So let me make both of those things, and then I'll be back with you. All right, guys, I am back, and I just learned something that I didn't know. Apparently, you can't make invar and some of the, I, that would, I, I would presume, some of the other thermal expansion stuff in a smeltery. I just put the, the required stuff in the smeltery, and it looks like it doesn't actually work. So I was... I'm, I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, 
quite a bit, actually. That's that's very surprising. So what we're going to have to do is make dust. So we can make Invar blend. And I'm kind of thinking that means we're going to need some sort of a... Well, I, actually, I suppose I could just use the grinder. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just made a sag mill. We can just do that. That'll work. Okay. So, right here... I've got this all kind of in place and looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to throw... Um, let's just throw some carrots in there for the... Well, no, that's not going to be enough RF. Let's throw... Let's throw a couple cooked pork chops in there. You can see that's going to start generating RF. These will start filling up slowly but surely, and so on and so forth. So, what we need to do... Let's put this in here and let this get pulverized into regular uh, nickel dust. Yep, that's still gaining. Okay, I think we'll be fine. Um, right? Yeah, we'll be okay. So we'll take that. That should be enough. And then I'm going to throw in eight iron ingots, so those can get pulverized up, then I can use that to make the invar blend, which I can use to make the invar. So, I'm working my way towards this hardened upgrade. I did get the sag mill done, and it's all looking pretty good, it's all functional, but still got some work to do. Alright guys, I am back. So, I need to make a bronze gear, like so, and then I think that's everything I need for the hardened upgrade. Just gotta grab a little redstone out of here. And there we go. And then we can take this and right click on this furnace. You can see how the corners changed. This is now a hardened machine, so I can enable different things. So it'll input from this side, it'll automatically pull from this chest and output anything to that chest. Ender IO has that, compati uh, that compatibility built in as well. So we've got basically anything I put in here will get processed all the way through. And I could use it for ore doubling and that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I want to make is a trivection chamber. And this thing is pretty cool. I do need a few items, though, that I don't have at the moment. So we need to make some electrum. Let's take a look here real quick. It says I need an electrum ingot. And it doesn't look like I could do that in an alloy smelter either. Molten Electrum. Oh, no, 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 I can. Okay, so gold and silver, one to one, that'll give me enough. So let's grab one silver, one gold. I don't need a lot of it, I don't think. Yeah, really don't need much. I just need a tiny bit. But I am going to need some. What is this? Limestone. It just happens to be... Okay, well, whatever. We'll let that cook into brick while I'm waiting on this. Let's throw one of you and one of you in there so that can make the electrum I need. Now, it also says that I need silver plates right here. Uh, and I think the easiest way to do this is actually going to be... Um... Oh, uh, maybe not. Maybe I am going to have to make a hammer. Oh, I was really hoping to avoid that. Because I suppose it's not going to let me do that here, will it? No. So I am going to have to make that other hammer. Man, <laughs> I was hoping to get out of doing that. That's all right. Let's cook up one lead. I just don't feel... I, I know that's not the most efficient thing in the world, but I'm just... I'm going to do it anyway, because I don't really care that much. There we go. And then, let's see. For this, I need a couple of sticks. So, you come here. Let's do that. Let's make the hammer from embers. Uh, come on. There we go. We'll make one of you. And then, I need oh, four silver ingots? What? Whoa. No. <laughs> yeah, that's... Is that legit? No. There we go. That's a little bit better. <laughs> I was gonna say. 
Okay, so we can get this uh, in a one-to-one -one conversion if we're smart about it. So all we need to do is make an iron plate like that using our engineer's hammer. And then we'll grab one aluminum brass there. And I believe if I throw my one aluminum brass in here, we take out our two ingots like that. I'll put that guy right here, this plate, so we can make a plate cast. And as soon as this is done, we should be okay. And I've got my electrum now that I need it as well, which is good. You done yet? Yeah, good, good, good. All right. Then we'll throw our two silver ingots in there. Let those cook up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. See, now we've got a plate, cla uh, a plate cast. Material cost, uh, it actually doesn't say. Well, JEI said one ingot will make me a plate, so let's give that a try. Yeah, it appears that way. Okay, good. So now we have what we need to make this thing. That was close. That almost ended up being a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be, but that's okay. So now what we're going to do is make this trivection chamber upgrade. We need one of you, and then this is what, a copper gear? Yeah, copper, piece of cake. So, iron ingot, copper gear. There we go, that makes the trivection chamber. What this thing does is we can put it in the augment slot, right? And we can take it out and put it back in if we never need to. But what'll happen is if I throw this wheat in here, it's gonna turn into flour. It'll then get sucked up to here. And for each flour, I'm gonna get two bread. Okay. Now, the awesome thing about that is that once this is all done processing, and this thing is not keeping up right now, but that's okay. It, I should have enough power to get me through this. Once we have the bread, we can take the bread and toss it back in here, and it will make toast. And it will make four toast for every one wheat. <laughs> so one piece of wheat gives me four toast, and here's where this gets ridiculous. You throw that in here, this thing actually generates 55, there we go, 56 RF per tick <laughs> for each piece of toast. Each piece of toast, 65,000 RF. So, one piece of wheat. Let's see, my math isn't amazing, but that's gonna be what, like 260,000 RF per one piece of wheat? <laughs> Something like that? 260, 265,000? I don't know, it's a lot. It, it will last us. <laughs> and wheat is an easily renewable resource. Uh, that'll get us going for quite a while. So we'll be just fine. You can see we've got all this toast. We can throw it in here, keep this going, and it's gonna keep generating power for us, which is great. Uh, and then when it's all done, it'll give us the bread. We do have to do this manually. I would like to get another redstone furnace with another trivection chamber in it, just to speed up the process, uh, so I don't have to do any of it manually. And I would ultimately like to feed it back into our culinary generator, but, for now, this will do quite nicely, and it's also a decent food source too. So if I get hungry, I can take I can just take some of my furnace fuel and <laughs> and munch on it, <laughs> which is uh, kind of funny in and of itself, actually. Uh, what pork chops? It's a little bit more, little bit more RF per tick, but not uh, actually less RF per tick, but at a higher rate. So the toast, I think the toast is probably the way to go. But anyway, that takes care of that. Now. The last thing that I wanted to uh, that I want to do today, well, maybe not the last thing, but one of the things, one thing I definitely want to do today. This village, this village is looking, whoo, this village is looking pretty bad. So I want to terraform this thing, and I think the best way to do that is going to be a nice little time lapse.
Alright guys, I am back. We got the time lapse all finished up, hope you guys enjoyed that. And the village, it's still not perfect, it's still far from perfect, there's still a lot of things that I want to kind of tweak and change, but it's a lot better than it was, it's a lot better than it was, especially once a lot of this grass spreads, uh, we'll be able to kind of fix this up a bit. Now, a lot of the other changes that I'm going to want to make to this village are going to be, in, are basically going to involve moving these buildings, so like... For example, I'd like to move uh, some of these houses up or down. I think I'm probably going to end up moving this house down a block, probably moving this house down a block, so on and so forth, things like that, um, so that we'll be able to really kind of get the terrain the way we want it. But for now, I think this is definitely a big step in the right direction and some pretty good progress for today. Unfortunately, though, guys, I am out of time for this episode. So, my friends, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it, and it really helps out my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time.